evening and welcome to this edition of News Leader on 6. Today is Tuesday, June 25th, 2013. I'm Jim Fuller. And I'm Chip Ramsey with the Saturday Independent Newspaper. In tonight's news, many Tennesseans drawing unemployment checks will see a drop in payments beginning next month. The city of Manchester is stepping up the fight against methamphetamine. Tullahoma Mayor Lane Curley responds to criticism from some county commissioners. And we'll take you to the Duck River Cleanup Day last Saturday. And we'll stop by the Performing Arts Center for, Ch for Ch uh, Performing Arts for Children's Camp at South Jackson Civic Center. We'll have all these stories and more on tonight's News Leader on 6. Stay tuned. Are you a shoeanista with no place local to find your style? Well, now you don't have to travel any further than Bryn's Shoe Boutique. Located at the Village on Jackson, 1940 North Jackson Street, Suite 120 in Tullahoma. From funky to formal, you can find the fit and style that will make you smile at Brands. A shoeanista herself, owner Brenda Kemp offers brands like Rocket Dog, Jessica Simpson, Mia, Nine West, Jay Renee, Bandolino, and more. Want that accessory splash that none of your friends have? Brands offers a selection of one-of-a-kind handbags and jewelry with just the right bling. So if your shoe selection doesn't stack up, find what you've been looking for at a price you can afford at Brands. Shoe Boutique, now open in Tullahoma. The construction sale continues at Russell Barnett Key in Tullahoma. Even though the construction process is still going on, Russell Barnett says we have to move them out now. Check out this 2013 Kia Rio, yours today for $15,995. With America's best warranty, Kia is the power to surprise. So remember, Russell Barnett Key in Tullahoma is the dealer for the people. And my question is, why buy anywhere else? Welcome back. Many Tennesseans drawing unemployment checks will see a drop in payments beginning next month. A new law signed by Governor Bill Haslam will cut the weekly $15 per child allotment currently paid to workers with jobless claims. The State Department of Labor and Workforce Development says the move will save about $40 million annually. Lawmakers created the child allowance in 2009 to qualify for nearly $142 million in federal st uh, stimulus spending. That money has since been used. The state says any the payments will strengthen the unemployment trust fund and might help avoid higher unemployment tax rates. Advocates for low-income families say it will have a statewide consequences for the working poor. The battle against methamphetamines has taken a huge toll on families and public resources across the South and Midwest. As the plague of easy-to-bake meth spreads into a state epidemic, Manchester officials are joining border town leaders to go after the source of much of the problem. Vice Mayor Ryan French offered an ordinance to the Manchester Board of Mayor and Aldermen last week that would restrict over-the-counter sales of pseudoephedrine, which is the main ingredient, ingredient in methamphetamine. In the ordinance, if the ordinance becomes city law, local pharmacies will no longer be able to sell most cold and allergy medicines without a doctor's prescription. French wasn't alone in his plan. Leaders from Franklin County were on hand to testify to the board that the meth problem has dropped precipitously since Winchester enacted a similar measure about a year ago. Franklin County Sheriff Tim Fuller told the board that 60% of the inmates in the county jail there are there on meth-related charges. Fuller also said that 90 children went into foster care last year in Franklin County because of meth. TBI Special Agent Tommy Farmer told the Manchester Board that when Oregon and Mississippi restricted over-the-counter pseudoephedrine sales, the seizure of meth labs dropped by 70 percent. Farmer added that re remediation of a home that has, been, that has had a meth lab in it runs between five and $25,000 $5, and $25,000. French will present the new ordinance to the safety committee before, uh, for final approval before it goes to the first of three votes before the full board on July 1st. More workers sought employment in Tennessee last month, forcing the unemployment rate up by three-tenths a point. State officials say the jobless rate edged up from 8 percent in April to 8.3 percent last month. Tennessee's labor force hit a record high of 3.13 million last month. The Department of Labor and Workforce Development says new entrants in the job market, re-entrants, and dislocated workers returning to the labor force account for the higher rate. From April to May, non-farm employment actually increased by about 50 5,700 jobs. Tennessee's jobless rate remains above the national average, which was 7.6% in May. 
We'll be right back with more News Leader on 6 after these messages. Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac in Tullahoma is committed to providing you with the highest quality and best variety of new and pre-owned vehicles possible. You can count on us for service, collision, full car detailing, selection, and Stan McNabb Chevrolet isn't just any car dealer. We are a 33-year family-owned, family-operated dealership with all your favorite brands in one great location. View all of our inventory online at stanmcnabb.com. And remember, if anyone can, Stan can. It's time to celebrate. You don't have to drive to the city for your party supplies anymore. The Celebrate Party Store has opened at 1802 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma to service all your party needs. Over 300 varieties of balloons, party favors, gift wrap, boxes, bags, bows, plates, napkins, tablecloths, and cups of all colors. Catering supplies from utensils to serving dishes, Wilton cake decorating supplies, and chocolate milks. Wedding, baby shower, bachelorette party, and themed birthday party supplies from any sport to Hollywood. From a Wow to Hello Kitty, Celebrate has it all. Hats, masks, patriotic decorations, pinatas, confetti cannons, and full-size celebrity cutouts, and a whole wall of greeting cards at 50% off. Celebrate is home-owned and operated by John and Karen Orr, who invite you to come in and see what they have. You won't believe your eyes, because they have it all. Start your celebration at Celebrate, 1802 Suite 820, North Jackson Street, Tullahoma, 931-455-5550. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay them a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Welcome back. Two Coffee County commissioners who are Tullahoma citizens were quite critical of the Tullahoma Board of Mayor and Aldermen's consideration of a large 25 cent property tax increase at last week's board meeting. Jim spoke with Mayor Curley about what he thought about the commissioner's criticism. Let's watch. Mayor Curley, uh, during the uh, final rating of the budget for this year, there were three county commissioners who are citizens of Tullahoma sure. who, who actually came to the, to the uh, board meeting and were a little bit critical of, uh, at least two of them were very critical of, uh, of your tax plan here. Uh, I get it perhaps a little, I, there was a little frustration on your part uh, because they were there. Could you, could you comment on that? Well, it wasn't so much because they were there. If they had simply identified themselves as citizens of the community, residents of the community, that was absolutely fine with me. I, I respect that. But they all identified themselves as county commissioners. And uh, it was frustrating for me because the Tullahoma City government has been recognized as being a very efficient government. Um, I, I mean, we, we pick up people's leaves. I mean, very few city governments pick up residents leaves and, and so many other services that we provide well and for the county commissioners to say that county government is more efficient in their operations than city government frankly is, a, is, is laughable and, and uh, I was having a hard time deciding uh, are, are these people really serious or not uh, but uh, I, they were serious and uh, I just think they need to spend a little bit more time uh, managing the affairs of our county government than, uh, than ex expressing opinions on the city government. Uh, a couple of them, frankly, might not have known better, but one of them does know better. And, um, and so it, it was frustrating. Uh, you know, as mayor, you open yourself wide open. You never know who's going to come and say what, how they're going to say it, what they're going to say. And, um, and I, I, I think I handle those kind of things okay, but I must admit, when those three county commissioners said what they said, it left me speechless for a few seconds. That tax increase, of course, did pass by a vote of four to three. Mayor Curley also explained why he felt this increase was necessary. Well, I'm very pleased to be here um, and report on the, the local city government budget that was recently adopted. As most people realize, I'm sure, it takes three different readings to adopt a budget. Uh, it takes, actually behind the scenes, it takes several months of preparation to prepare the budget. Um, and so we're dealing with not just the departments of city government, police and fire and public works and administration and parks and rec, but we're also dealing with 
independent agencies of city government that receive funding from the city government. The school system, the economic development authority, the airport authority. So it, all, all that comes together and we've, um, we propose a budget. This particular year, based on my knowledge of what needed to be done in the community, uh, I felt as though I had no choice but to propose what I consider to be a fairly modest property tax increase. This would be the first property tax increase in nine years in Tullahoma. It was not an easy decision to make that proposal, but it was something I felt that needed to be done. Um, because the only way to address some of the needs in the community was to either cut back in other areas, like do we want to have only one community center? Do we want to lay off police or firemen? Do we want to go to residential garbage pickup every two weeks instead of every week? I mean, those are the kinds of decisions that had to be made. So I decided to propose a 25 cent per hundred dollar um, on, on the property tax increase. And for a hundred thousand dollar home, which is fairly typical in Tullahoma, that amounts to about a sixty-two dollar a year increase or about a dollar ten a week. Now in return for that we are going to get um, a, a new pool, state-of-the-art pool in Tullahoma. We're going to be able to fix the roof at the high school. Those will be done with bond issues. So um, uh, the, the money that will be coming in from this increase will go to pay the debt on the, the pool and the, the high school roof. And when I, when I say the high school roof, please understand that high school is enormous. So this, is a, this would be a big roof project. The 80% of the increase, however, is going to go to the school system. Since 2006, the amount of money that the city government appropriates to the school system has either been, has, most of the time it's decreased or it is flat from the previous year. So with this increase in appropriation to the school system, we will now finally get back to where the appropriation was in 2006. So um, they will be working off the same amount of money from the city government as they got seven years ago. So uh, although it was a difficult decision, as I said, to, to make this proposal, I, I really do think it was the right thing to do and I do think it will cause improvements to be made. Now, several people have said, well, why doesn't the school system just cut back? Well, they, they have cut back. Um, we have 13 fewer teachers than we had six years ago. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the appropriation from the city government has been going down as well. So uh, last year we saw a little uptick in the number of students, and hopefully we'll see a little increase again this year as well. So um, um, I'm, I, it did pass on third reading, and I, you know we're ready to move ahead now, make these improvements, and uh, and and let the citizens enjoy, continue to enjoy the city government of Tullahoma. And we'll have more from that interview with the Tullahoma mayor on Thursday's newscast. Stay with us. We'll be right back in a moment with more news leader on six. Everybody's in a business. A realtor helps build your family with a home to grow in. A doctor keeps you healthy and can fix a broken heart. An accountant keeps you on track for your future dreams. As a master IJO jeweler, Woodard's Diamond Showroom is a little of all of these because we're in the love business. We're there for your family's special times with regular happiness checkups and symbols of love. That's our business at Woodard's Diamond Showroom inside Northgate Mall of Tullahoma. It's a great day at Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma. Keith Barnett here today to tell you about the 2013 redesigned Ford Fusion. It is the best mid-sized car for the money. It averages 35 miles per gallon. And most of all, folks, it is a five-star safety rated vehicle. These Ford Fusions start out at $19,995 after Ford manufactured rebates and incentives. So come on down to Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma or visit us on the web at russellbarnett.com. Tell them, Clay. My question is, why buy anywhere else? 
Welcome to Camino Real, home of the area's most authentic Mexican food. Expect quality service in a friendly environment that features the only truly authentic Mexican food in the area. With favorites like tacos, fajitas, enchiladas, burritos, tostadas, freshly made guacamole, and Mexican rice. All made from scratch, using homemade Mexican recipes and only the freshest ingredients. Come and enjoy a meal at Camino Real with the great food, friendly service, and warm atmosphere of Old Mexico. Welcome back. The Duck River Development Agency sponsored the annual Duck River Cleanup last Saturday. News leader's Marilyn Ewing stopped by and brings us this report. June 23, 2013 marked the annual Duck River Cleanup in Bedford County. And again this year, well over 100 volunteers gathered to participate in the event. I spoke with co-chairperson Helen Garner, who was extremely pleased with the event. I am so thrilled, Marilyn, and especially with the fact that we had to make a decision earlier in the week for no boats this time because of the high water and, the, and it was rushing pretty fast. Yes. And yes. Safety first. Absolutely. All of the thousands of pounds of trash and litter that we've actually picked out of the Duck River, uh, you want to certainly top that each and every year. Where were we last year? Marilyn, uh, that is a good question. We, we had three and a half tons last year. And the first year we did it, uh, which with me was 14 years ago, mm -hmm. we've actually been doing it 16 okay. years with Wayne doing, right. having a small cleanup before mm -hmm. uh, I came on board. Yep. We had 12 tons that first year. Wow. So actually, we've been doing a little bit less because uh, we feel like we've cleaned out the river uh, well enough mm -hmm. in so many places that uh, it's just not there to mm -hmm. pick up anymore. Okay. Okay. This year, the Bedford County Rotary Club Park with the event. Here's more with Coach Chairperson Wayne Bomar. We're excited this year we've added a new partner. Okay. Rotary has taken this on as a signature yeah. event yeah. along with uh, Helen, uh, you know, and, and uh, her her folks. So yes. it's just getting bigger and bigger. And we're, Rotary's going to try to challenge it to be the entire Duck River before we're through, not just Bedford County. Of course, you always encourage individuals to be careful uh, when uh, water sports and, and things right. of that nature. Oh, yeah, anytime you're on the river, uh, you need to really be careful and, and always check the flows before you go. And, and, and remember one thing, leave no trace. In other words, if you enjoy the river and you go out and have a picnic, bring everything back with you and dispose of it properly. Along with volunteers, many were there assisting throughout the event. Bedford County Mayor Eugene Ray assisted with the registration. As the Bedford County Mayor, I have worked with them to help encourage other communities to come in like Coffee County, like uh, Marshall County. Marshall County is doing it. Uh, Coffee County did it for a while. Yes. And we're trying to go all the way down through Columbia and the places. So I have worked with Wayne and Helen for a good while to do it. Absolutely. And I've been here to rush the people in, and we got an excellent turnout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Duck River is a very special river. It's the most uh, biodiverse river the one of the most it is the most biodiverse river in the United States mm -hmm. and one of the most biodiverse and uh, in the United States I think it's about three and they in the top three in the whole United States so uh, this is very important and uh, and it's a great day to have it yes. and I appreciate Maryland and company yes. uh, and uh, let us be have an opportunity to tell the people what's going on mm -hmm. we had an excellent turnout today we had over 35 or 40, possibly 135 to 140. Yes. We had so many people, we had to double up on wow. the sites yeah. and find people to go. So it's growing, and I hope it continues to grow uh, because it's outstanding for our community. Another successful Duck River cleanup in Bedford County. I'm Marilyn Ewing, reporting for News Leader on 6. Don't forget to tune in to this week's Living Show tonight at 6.30 p.m., Thursday morning at 9 a.m., and Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings at 6.30 p.m. This week's guests include Kiwanis Fireworks representative Mike Rutherford to tell us about Tulum's upcoming fireworks display. Andrew Booker is asking for help with affording a medical help dog, and Tullahoma's sesquicentennial celebration is this weekend. And we'll have some guests on to tell you a little bit more about that event. All that and more on this week's Living Show. We'll be right back in a moment with more news later. We're losing it, doctor. Not on my shift quickly. Brush. Roller. What a transformation. It's got to be okay. Okay, nothing. 
At Paintworks of Tullahoma, we specialize in domestic emergencies with Martin Senior Paints. You can be the paint doctor, too, when you treat your home with Martin Senior interior and exterior finishes. Doctor, we've got another one. Got you covered. Paintworks of Tullahoma. Come see the paint doctor stat. The highest standard of integrity delivers stability and honor. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of integrity in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care, meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. Welcome back. South Jackson Civic Center's Performing Arts for Children and Teens recently completed a two-week camp at the center. John Gray was on hand to see what was going on and brings us this report. All right, this is South Jackson Civic Center, and this is PAC, which is the Performing Arts Camp for Children and Teens. And this year there are around 120 children participating in the PAC camp. It's a two-week camp at South Jackson Civic Center. Ah, are y'all having fun? What are you doing? Are you making a tie? This is in the hall. This is a little bit older group right here. And they're learning dance steps. Alright, this is another group and they are they're dancing or rowing or doing something. But it's a learning experience. All of this is a learning experience. Right now I have Erica Wonder, the director of PAC, and Eric Peterson. And give us a little diagram about what's going on here for the past couple of weeks for the PAC camp. Okay, well, here at camp we're working on four different areas of the performing arts. Acting, singing, dancing, and tech. Um, so they get to go to workshops all day long. They'll, they'll hit all four. And tomorrow they get to put on a showcase of everything that they have learned. So they'll do two songs per group with their dance. And then the oldest group gets to do skits that they have learned. So they're pretty excited about that. And then the oldest kids also get to specialize in either acting, dance, music, or tech. Our tech crew is kind of all around us right now setting up for the show. Our music has learned a special song, dance has learned a special dance, and those are the kids doing the skits, the actors. Right, right. Now what age group, what age group does this in compass from where to where? We have kindergarten through high school this year. We mm -hmm. have pretty much everybody. And about 120 kids this year? Uh, actually, we hit 130 this year. 130, <laughs> yeah. okay. It's all said and done. And Eric, what what do you what's your what's your position other than helping her? Well, I am the assistant director of the overall camp, but I am also the tech director. I am in charge of this lovely tech crew that you see around us. <laughs> okay. And I am in charge of teching the showcase, which is tomorrow at 5:30. So I've got some of my tech crew running sound, running lights, running our projector. I've got stagehands, stage managers. That's all my department. Very and beautiful. I've also been doing the tech workshops these past two weeks, which we've taught costuming, we've taught makeup, we've taught how to light the stage, we've talked about, we've talked about set design, we've talked about uh, stage etiquette. I mean, anything that is, pretty much anything that's behind the scenes in a show is what we cover in tech and we've covered it the past two weeks. Very good. So we can look at the two of you and look at what's going on here at South Jackson Civic Center and know that the performing arts in our area are being brought forward by a younger group of people and that's wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely, we want to keep the arts growing. So we start with our little biddies right. and all the way up. We want to keep them working hard. Start them young and keep them going. <laughs> and some of the attendees entertained the crowd there with that song. Let's watch that video.
We'll be right back with your weather forecast after these messages. On the train test range, the search for any possible weakness continues. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Train, the most reliable for a reason. Hello, my name is Joe Stroop with Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. I'm here to talk to you about a couple incentives that are going on between now and end of the year. First is your federal tax credit up to $300. Secondly, 0% financing up to 15 months on XL products. Third, spring promotion up to $1,100. Finally, $500 incentives from your local power distributor. Please give us a call at 455-8757. Thank you. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. Looking for a unique gift for someone special, or perhaps something just for yourself? Then you need to check out Grady Mac Denim Company, right here in the heart of Tullahoma. Grady Mac features the full line of men's and women's Lucky brand apparel. Stop in and check out our denim production line. Grady Mac offers a full line of outdoor sporting apparel and much more. And check out our custom fly fishing equipment, fine art, and fine sports memorabilia. There's something for everyone at Grady Mac Denim Company, the most unique store in Tullahoma. Welcome back. We'll take a look at your weather forecast at this time, starting with your weather history on this day. Our record high was in 1930 at 99 degrees. The record low was in 1936 at 50 degrees. Average high on this day is 86 and the average low is 65. For tonight, look for partly cloudy weather in your forecast with a low of around 69. Partly cloudy weather continues into the forecast on Wednesday with a high of 89 and a low of 71. And some scattered thunderstorms could be popping up on Thursday with a high of 88 and a low of 71. Uh, this weekend, a special friend of the Saturday Independent, Lori Flowers, uh, who's been battling cancer for the last few weeks, uh, the Red Raider football team at Coffee County Central High School, which her son is a member of, it will be a rising junior, Justin, uh, they're having a little fundraiser for her at Advanced mm -hmm. Auto Parts in Manchester starting at 8.30. Car wash, uh, they're going to be selling baked goods and stuff like that. So everybody stop by. Uh, you know, I know there are a lot of benefits like this out there and a lot of things going on. People are very busy this time of year, but Lori is one of those, uh, those awesome people who really deserves our, our help. So. Okay, check that out. That's this that's Saturday. That's this Saturday at 8.30 right. in Manchester at Advanced Auto Parts. Okay. All right, that's our news leader report for this evening. We invite you to join us each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6, 8, and 10 for News Leader on 6. You have a good evening. Have a great night.